Welcome everybody for another Asian Cup update. Uh, today we saw another big favorite entering a tournament in Japan. Um, Japan of course coming off a great World Cup where they almost had Belgium beaten and just because Belgium didn't give up uh, themselves they did not advance. Maybe for some reason it was better for the tournament that Belgium advanced eventually they became third place don't think that Japan might have repeated that task but that was probably one of the best games at the World Cup and with a little bit more experience I think this Japan squad could have at least gotten into overtime and then you never know Japan is a hard-working team and hard-working is probably exactly what can describe uh, today's game as well against Turkmenistan which is a first-time contender and um, just for flag geeks out there Turkmenistan has actually a wonderful flag with the green and then it has a uh, band which kind of a carpet pattern on there really great flag uh, compared with Kyrgyzstan who is which is more corporate logo like with the center symbol similar to Kazakhstan just in red and yellow but yeah that's flags We're talking soccer here um, somewhat surprising Turkmenistan took the lead with a actually kind of surprising long range shot um, let me I need to give credit to the player because that was probably one of the goals of the tournament. Although it it landed kind of almost centrally to to, to the goal, so I think a goalkeeper probably should have saved that one. But uh, maybe there was the sun involved. I don't know. Uh, the goal came in the twenty sixth for by Amanov. Really, uh, great goal to watch. I mean, the flat curve that this ball took was great. Uh, and that's how it ended in the first half. And then Japan came back uh, with. I think it was Osaka who hit two goals. Uh, yes, two goals by Yuya Osaka in the 56th. Uh, nice equalizer. Um, and then uh, in the 60th, probably uh, one of the easiest goals that he will ever score. Uh, just in front of empty net, ball was given in, and uh, Japan makes maybe three. One th uh, through um, Doan, Ritsu Doan. And then a uh, penalty was given, make it 3-2. So the squad are probably closer than the game eventually was. But still, don't um, don't discount, you know, you give up two goals against the side that is considered considerably weaker than yourself. So um, we already know that Japan is a little bit also in a transition phase, which is odd a little bit, but, you know, it's the reality. So Japan was not among the top top favorites, which they have been at the past um, Asian Cups. I mean, they have won in 2011 and have been pretty strong uh, in the 2000s and uh, 2010s. Uh, only in here uh, last year was not maybe as um, great. Well, that was the first game. So uh, hard work for Japan, maybe a lot more work than needed. Uh, the second game in this group was actually quite an exciting one between Uzbekistan and Oman. Uh, maybe not the level yesterday with Iraq, but uh, again, um, a three-goal game, Uzbekistan running two, one winner, uh, getting an early goal from a free kick I think it was, uh, and that was one of those free kicks that I think the goalkeeper should have saved. It was, um, yes, it's a free kick goal, which is always nice to have, but um, I think it was the goalkeeper should have saved it. In the 72nd, so this was the uh, before half in the 72nd, Oman equalizes somewhat surprisingly. And uh, in the 85th, uh, it was kind of a weird goal. It was a nice through but I mean, the goal from Oman was also a really nice uh, pass uh, that just needed to be converted it, it, it was really well taken but um, um, winner for Uzbekistan was also uh, from a substitute player what's his name Shumorodov uh, the first one Ahmedov who is the big star of uh, Uzbekistan big star in the sense that I, I've even heard of him I couldn't tell you now where he's playing but I've heard of Ahmedov before and yeah uh, ball he, gets through, uh, he is running to the near post and manages to slot it home. Uh, a kind of uh, angle that shouldn't happen, but yeah, it happened. And so Group F 
uh, is standing at the moment at Japan uh, with three two goals is first and Uzbekistan two one. So uh, the two favorites assert themselves, but make a little bit more hard work. And the way Oman was playing, probably he could also give uh, Japan a little bit of trouble unless Japan really finds themselves, which is something I personally hope for. I think uh, a good Japan team is usually a um, good thing for the Asian Cup. And then the last uh, game that I want to talk about is from the uh, Group E, where we had yesterday uh, Saudi Arabia winning 4-0. It was Qatar against Lebanon. And Lebanon actually scored a goal that was not given due to VAR intervention. And I assume it was because of a foul, but it seemed overall all right to me. I mean, goals like that have been given. Um, and I think this took the wind out of the sails from Lebanon. Um, yes, probably if you're really by the uh, letter of the law, you can discount it. I personally would not have uh, taken away that goal. But yeah, uh, Lebanon did not take the lead and uh, Qatar did. Uh, there was there was a really nice free kick. I think it was the 1-0 uh, for Qatar uh, by Hisham which was actually late in the game. Let's see, when was that? Uh, happened in the 65th minute, Bassam Hisham, and then in 79th, Almas Ali uh, made it 2-0 for Qatar and put the game away. Uh, everyone looking at Qatar, we who were playing in maroon jerseys like this maroon here, still wearing the avalanche because outside it's snow, snowland, uh, like crazy. Um, it's not as bad as it is in the Alps. Uh, we still can drive fortunately, but it is a lot of snow. On the one side it's really pretty, on the other side it's horrible to drive. Uh, and yeah, That's a different story. Maybe if I do a video tomorrow you will see a little bit of snow. Uh, I'm not sure because I don't make usually a video when I have the girls in the car and if the snow is mostly here. If, if I go down in the city uh, it's actually okay. -ish. So we are right above the snow line as usual. But yeah, uh, Qatar ends up 2-0 winners and we're all kind of interested how is Qatar playing because you know um, they will be the host of the next World Cup. I want to see are they a decent result? I mean they beat Switzerland although a B team. Where are we going with Qatar? We've seen all the teams. Um, Iran asserted themselves big time. Uh, Korea was kind of a little bit more shaky. Just I think it was a one was it a one nil win. Um, something like that. Uh, Japan, okay, -ish. Saudi Arabia uh, convincingly and at the beginning a lot of upsets. So uh, it's gonna, gonna, gonna be kind of interesting. But I think uh, we're now getting into this phase. Uh, the um, favorites have realized, oh yeah, there are some upsets happening and are taking the opening games a little bit more serious. And the way the Asian Cup is structured is a little bit odd. It's like the uh, old World Cup and the uh, I thought I know in the 1990 World, World Cup the teams were really seeded more or less by their ranking and you had the two best teams always meeting at the end. Uh, almost always. Or am I wrong here? Probably I'm wrong here. Now in the 99 World Cup the, uh, Germany and Yugoslavia met first. And that Italy and the Czechs played last was also kind of a fluke of the draw. Okay, I'm wrong here, but I know that at the Euros this was happening uh, for sure, at, at least at Euro uh, 92, that the two best teams No, also not true. Forget about it. I'm tired. I'm incoherent. But yeah, uh, the way the groups are set up is really that the best two teams meet last, so takes a in my opinion, a little bit the wind out of the sails of uh, the group stage. Um, and it remains to be seen. Um, I cannot say much of the level of play. People keep complaining about the level of play a little bit. What I see is empty stadiums and that's never a good look. Uh, it seems to be that most of the stadiums there are oversized and the travel within Asia is um, expensive. And yeah, it's a shame, honestly. Well, if you've seen any of the games, please fill me in. Uh, I want to know more. Uh, again, uh, the Europeans uh, that I kind of follow and see a little bit, they are complaining about uh, a level of play, but I know that they are. Uh, 
I don't take them too serious on that. I actually like exciting uh, tournaments and you know national team tournaments, continental tournaments. I usually love a lot. Uh, I can. <laughs> I've watched a lot of Africa Cup, and that's never really pretty, but it's exciting in the sense that there's a lot to. Uh, the teams are so level that it's exciting. Let's put it that way. Well, again, fill me in. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.